immigration talks, President Trump said something that almost every single person in America actually agrees with. An awful lot of immigrants come to this country from other places that aren't very nice. Those places are dangerous, they're dirty, they're corrupt, and they're poor. And that's the main reason those immigrants are trying to come here, and you would too if you live there. President Trump asked why America doesn't receive more immigrants from places you might want to visit on vacation. Why aren't we getting more people from Norway, he said, which by almost any measure, including the UN's measures, is the most developed and richest country in the world. Well, saying this, Trump used an expletive, and that's not surprising either, since he uses them all the time and was speaking privately. And yet, for some reason, virtually everyone in Washington, New York, and L.A. considered this a major, major event. Why is that? To find out, we're joined by Jose Pera. He was Latino Communications Director for Barack Obama's 2012 campaign, and he joins us in the studio. Jose, thanks for coming up. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. So I think it's, t I mean, of course you can have a debate over what countries we ought to admit immigrants from, and I think we're kind of having that debate. But what bothers me about the explosion this afternoon is the dishonesty in it. And I'll just give you one example. Joan Walsh over on CNN, an analyst over there, was asked just a minute ago, would you rather live in Haiti or Norway? And she said with a straight face, I can't say. Now that's lying. If we've gotten to the point where we all have to pretend that every country is exactly as nice as every other country, then we're being dishonest. No, it's basically they're talking about, I think the outrage here is about the insult and the expletive that is attached to the people who come from these countries and who are making a life here in the United States, contributing fully to the U.S. right now. They were talking specifically about El Salvador and Haiti, two countries where TPS was recently revoked by the Trump administration. Right. And between these countries, we're talking about the people from those countries. They're contributing close to $170 billion in GDP. No, look, but I'm not, I mean, year, let, and they're be, making a full uh, contribution well, to the I mean, economy. Well, I mean, it's actually country, a pretty, it's, those, a complicated, it's a complicated picture. But I, I agree with you. If you're saying that a lot of the people who come from those countries are good people, I, of course, I completely agree. But the idea that you're not allowed to say that they're pretty crummy countries, Haiti, for example, or El Salvador, I've been in both of them. That's why people are leaving them to come here. So I don't understand what the sin is. You're not allowed to point out that other countries aren't as good places to live as America? Like, what is the problem? There is definitely an, an issue here because basically what ha what's happening here is that the president is connecting and articulating the same vision that we saw in Charlottesville. When they're talking about we won't replace you, with the, uh, with the okay, chanters and the please, marchers were talking about try to by this time, it's, 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 it's the same thing. And, and it's, it's look, not the same thing. It's the same thing. Look, and it's the same. Oh, slow down. What happened, to, what to, happened to the whole any, masses okay. that, on the Statue of Liberty that we're talking about? Try and track with me here, okay? The president, from what we know, and maybe he said other things we don't know about, but what we know, he said these countries are crummy places, okay? They're holes or whatever, used profanity. But the people who left those countries, some of them rode trains all the way through Mexico or hid in a wheel well of a plane to leave, they would agree with that. So why the outrage? Uh, is it you have to lie and pretend, as Joan Walsh does, that, I don't know, I'd live in Norway or Haiti? Like, we've gotten to a place where nobody can be honest about anything. Do you see the point? Well, for, for, first of all, one of the things is that do, do we apply the same, uh, the same metric to uh, Eastern Europe? We're talking about countries that are not doing too well right now in crime measures and economic uh, measures I mean, and, 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 and other issues. You're not going to hear seem, me say, well, well, I'm moving to Romania. Seem, but we seem to be applying this, uh, this only to countries where there are brown people, no, such I as mean, Haiti you and know El what? Salvador. Let's be totally And real. we're talking about Norway, like you said yesterday, which again ties back to this social reengineering that, okay, no, that say, they're trying I, to I, I don't want to get all fact-based on you, but Norway is, according to the United well, Nations, important. well, here, here are some. The United Nations says that Norway is the most developed country in the world. Its sovereign wealth fund, I think, is the biggest in the world because of the oil discoveries offshore there. As you know, it's the richest place in the world, mm -hmm. okay? Haiti is the poorest place in the hemisphere and has been for a long time. People are actually staying in this country right now legally because Haiti is so bad, we don't think they should have to return. So if you say Norway is a better place to live and Haiti's kind of a hole, anyone who's been to those countries or has lived in them would agree. But we're jumping up and down, oh, you can't say that. Why can't you?